previously on Spirit Hunter Deathmark. Amos' eyes are staring at the wall. It almost seems like it's alive. And then he opens his mouth and just says, Hey there, life's a bitch, ain't it? Oh my god! And now back to being demonetized. Hello! Sneako B! Back with some more Spirit Hunter Deathmark. When we last left off, Oh my god, can we stop going to this fucking school again, Jesus? Hero, what do you think about this? I don't believe in no ghosts! Okay, thanks. But after taking a few more tests, which really took me back to my younger days and not the best way, we finally faced off against Miss Sue, who was actually a lot less terrifying looking than I sort of expected. It looked kind of goofy. But I also actually kind of enjoyed uh, trying to figure out like the, the process of beating her. Like holding up something to my chest as an airbag, because that's what you do to opt for ostriches. And then distracting her with the Ashura pendant long enough for I to run over to the piano and uh, play a song to weaken her. Then setting fire to the pendant and causing the snakes to basically consume her only human side and setting her free. Which you guys explained to me the reason why that w like worked and why that ended up being the thing that essentially saved her was because she detested humanity. She hated them. And she wanted to be rid herself of her own humanity. So when the snakes essentially attacked the one human part that she had left of her, it made her happy because then it was fine. She finally had cast it all away. I see. That makes sense. Still a weird snake bore ostrich lady, though. But with it, the fortune teller and the idol both were free of their marks. But here in Ishiki, of course, we're shit out of luck. However, we did get word based on the books that we found from Mizu that seemingly she was experimented on down in that area in the sewers that we came across before the area that was locked and we ran to the homeless guy like seemingly they were like doing some kind of experimentation i guess maybe harnessing the power of ghosts or spirits or something in order to transform people into like these abominations something i don't know it's interesting it's something not quite where i thought the story would be going it's almost like taking a uh, a supernatural phenomenon and making it almost more scientific it's like ah oh, god damn the nazis are fucking harnessing the power of ghosts to kill us all <laughs> like some crazy wolfenstein plot or something at least that seems to sort of be the suggestion here but then again i guess isn't it always people's fault right even technically a paranormal site that shit started because of somebody putting shit into motion but it's interesting i i like this game's story i do think the the mystery that they have going on here is is interesting and how each spirit essentially leads into the next one like we're following a train of logic with each one and then each spirit itself is acting as its own barrier a wall that you have to get around and sort of figure out but anyway last episode uh daniel pariah said not a lot of people know this but the reason hero is so scared of spirits and rejects their existence so strongly is because she did a lot of unethical testing on animals and is afraid that they may come back for revenge interesting that's interesting I guess it's never clarified in game. I imagine that is something that must have been taken from the art book. So apparently the, the there's an art book for this game that kind of goes into more detail about a lot of the characters and seemingly is actually uh, it mentions basically another version of what the game could have been where the, the characters that are partners that we were with were actually like more fucked up. Like the jock guy was actually like in reality a real bully. That weeby dude was a uh, uh, a certain P word, which was, was basically the thing we were kind of worried about when we first came across him. Mashita was like a dirty cop who was corrupt and other things. But I think they dropped the idea because I think potentially maybe they thought the game was already dark enough as it was that it wasn't necessary. And to be honest, I, I think that was probably a good call. Like, I, while I, I do it one side think, oh, that is sort of interesting, right? This sort of spice things up. I also think it's like, almost like overkill and it, it kind of makes it feel like like why do i have any reason to give a shit about these characters when they're all monsters right and i think the way they have it now is better because at least even if i wouldn't say every partner has been like you know equal like Mashita has easily been the best one and the more, most interesting one in my opinion and as much as i gave christy shit i feel like she ended up honestly amounting to a lot more by the end of that story and a lot of it's because there's like at least something uh relatable and understandable about them and you sort of grow to appreciate their company and their contributions like we're looking out for each other we're good partners so if they were just like a piece of shit psychopath who's just like as bad in some other ways to the the demon monster spirits that we're fighting i think it would be a little much so in my opinion, as much as I think that like the, hearing these concepts and the fact that this could have happened is interesting, I think it was a good call to just kind of maybe pull back on that a bit. So maybe it could be that that bit of knowledge that is mentioned in this comment is actually not even canon to this story, but to that potential other version. 
especially if it isn't actually mentioned anywhere in this game. But regardless, uh, Daniel Pariah, thank you so much for your uh, enlightening comment. And it is that reason you are comment of the day. By the way, in regards to the, uh, uh, the stuff I was like wondering, like how the hell was I supposed to know this in the la uh, the last video? Like how I was supposed to know which like of the instruments was hidden. So the, the logic behind that one was the megaphone was hidden inside the horse head and the piano was behind a locked door and we never came across a harmonica. So that's why the harmonica was the, the right answer. Damn, that's a whew. Yeah, do some real uh, out of the box thinking for that one. And in regards to the song one, that one either was something that was potentially mo made more sense in Japanese, or it had to relate to the the three shards of paper that I found and get sort of pieced together that way. And the way that worked was you essentially had to read it vertically. That's what threw me off. You said I had to you had to basically go the first line of one and then go to the next line of the next and then the. And then, or go to the, the first line of the next one and then the first one of the next one instead of like alternating every other word. And even then you still kind of had to figure out what words that were missing from each of them. There wasn't, it wasn't really told. You kind of had to, again, piece it together. The game expects a lot from you, I'm going to say. This game does expect a lot from its players. The only one that really was pretty like not too bad was probably the, the ghost lady because they kind of explain that mystery verbatim like right at the get-go. And everybody else has been pretty like, yo, you just got to eat shit <laughs> i don't dislike it though like i don't actually like absolutely hate that it's like being so uh non-transparent about a lot of the details for these ghosts because it does kind of get my theory brain going as i try to figure it out myself and there's something satisfying even just hearing from you guys exactly like uh, what is it that was truly going on here to help me understand it better because in the end spirits in, in themselves i think what makes them creepy and unnerving is that we don't understand them right that's why I kind of, I can appreciate it in this instance. But anyway, we have uh, now moved on to, I believe, chapter five. And I think this is supposed to be normally the end of the game if we, uh, if we don't save everybody. So I might be curious to try and see what happens if I just let this partner die, potentially, or whatever my partners die at the end of this one, just to see if there's like a bad ending or if the game just stops before going back and then like, and doing it uh, the correct way, if I can. I assume I can even figure out what the bad one is. It ends up being anything like the, the wedding one. I might just be like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do wrong here to, to, to make this bad. But okay, so we've met Dr. Uh, Shuji Diamond, who uh, the sickly guy. I mean, so I got Hiru here. I think let's go ahead and uh, go with uh, uh, Diamond here. Diamond, Damon? I, mean, I, th I think it's I think it's Diamond? I don't know. Actually, no, I think it's, I think it's A. I think I, this is the one I get fucked up all the time. Because I think... AI in German is I, but I think in Japanese it's A. You guys can help clarify for me. I can't. I, I can't remember. And that's, I think I may be one of the ones I get fucked up all the time. Oh, we're not any shit. So then we're heading back to the sewers once again. To the South Alabama. Except we're actually we're coming at it from a different angle. Yeah. Not the one with many holes. We're starting at another end and going down from the opposite direction. We reach in M News South Alley. Like the North Road, silent and empty. It's hard to believe in a lab entrance is on a residential street like this. In any case, we should look around. I mean, that's the obvious place to look, but let's look over here. Even though this is a residential area, the street's completely deserted. There are traces of the name of the store up on the roof. It looks like it's closed now. It goes to the bushes, the sky, no, nothing, all right. There's a manhole. Unlike K. Miyamashi, this road has only one. It definitely looks suspicious. The manhole, it has a place to grip it, just like the one at K. Miyamashi. This has to be it. Still, this is strange. Why doesn't the public have any idea about this underground shelter? You'd think the sewer department would, at least. A reasonable conclusion. Yeah, it's kind of, I was kind of wondering, I'm like, how would nobody know about this? We can assume all info on this place is being concealed by someone. It'd be trouble if it were made public, huh? There's people who used to be involved. Yes, some are still alive today. A certain city representative used to be my grandfather's colleague. The Cujos may not be innocent either. Hmm. Were they involved somehow? Oh, 
You don't know. After the war, the Cujo head was prohibited from public service. It was because he assisted the army in some manner. So he could have been involved with the lab. If I had to make a guess, this man holds a Pandora's box for any dignitary with a damaged reputation. I wonder what secrets we'll find. Still, you know a lot about it considering. I'm interested in the lab myself, though not as much as Hiru is. I've already done some research. But, this being such an important secret place, isn't it a little too easy to get into? True, they're not guarding it. The lid could have originally been locked or bolted shut somehow. This Mizzou might have done away with the restraints. Hmm. Or maybe there's just another ghost down there that kills anybody that comes and c gets close to it. When I lift the lid, a musty smell greets me. Ugh, this smells familiar. Like the other entrance, the hole goes deep. DEEP! Thankfully, there's a ladder here, too. This reminds me of when I was a kid. What, the smell of ass? Let's get going, Yashiki. Where are we covering hair down here? I, th I think it is day. I think it's day. Damon and I descend to the dark world beneath it, hidden beneath the H city. What awaits us down in that darkness? Will we find the truth we're seeking? Or a hell smeared with blood? Chapter 5 Cannon Soldier. What the hell was that sound? I didn't even, we didn't even see anybody there. Just darkness. What the fuck? Is it like some wartime music or something? Huh. The sight that greets us at the bottom is the same as what we saw at Kami Imachi. The looming concrete walls and the suffocating stagnant air. We weren't wrong to assume that the two places are connected. <coughs> this is not a place someone with bad lungs like me should be. And is that army song? Yeah. Hearing that, I feel worse. It's been 50 years. There's no way a radio phonograph is still playing. Something supernatural has to be at work. It's so easy to fall back and blame things on the supernatural now. I've gotten used to- gotten too used to this occult world. Yeah, seriously. Hmm, I see. I don't have any spiritual powers, so that kind of thing is beyond me. If you say so, then I believe you. Yeah, it was, actually, were you with someone with, like, really low spiritual spiritual power? Yeah, you were. Five. And even weaker power. What the fuck is that? It's a blood stain! There's an area with the stain that is lighter colored than the rest. Run my finger over it and realize that something is stuck to the floor. I keep scratching it until it starts to crease. I manage to pull it off the floor. Hey, alright, give me that sweet healing, baby. Ugh. This is kind of unnerving. Um, so we can go forward. Let's try going back. Oh, some, something was on the wall here. There are pitch black stains. Is this blood? Seems so. Still, there's entirely too much of it. It's like a blood bag burst. That doesn't... Doesn't that other thing bother you, too? Of course it bothers me. I imagine we're on the same page. It looks like something was posted here. There's a clearly defined clean space on the wall, as if something had been there. It looks like it avoided being sprayed with blood because something was originally posted here. Some kind of poster or bulletin. There's unfortunately no way to know. Hmm. This seem to seem to be old blood. It crackles and breaks off into flakes when I run my fingers over it. I have no tools to work with here, so... 
It's a thick iron door. The keyhole isn't rusted. I could open it if I had the key. Okay. Moving forward. Wow, that was a lot of blood. Trail of blood leads to the ladder at the entrance. Someone trying to escape. Another mark. Open my eyes wide and stare at the white space that might have been a poster. I only end up drying out my eyes. The stains seem to be old blood. Okay, crackles and breaks. Oh, come to a crossroad here. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> Someone's just taking a doo doo! Something flows swiftly down the pipes. <laughs> As I ran my flashlight across it. Oh! I see you late. Hey, get out of here. I found I found Walter, guys. She was just it was just hanging out down there in the corner. Ah, oh, you found me. <laughs> Walter, what are you doing and how did you die? Uh, okay. To the left. Another door. Uh-oh. When I step in view of an iron door that appears before me, the air cliff clearly shifts. Goosebumps arise. A presence is approaching. There's an incessant beeping. Like from a telegraph. Keep going, freeze. Turn back. Freeze! I freeze in place. Uh oh. The beeping becomes gradually louder, almost as if it's trying to tell me something. The sequence is dash dot dash dot dot dash. Just keeps repeating this code. What in the world does it mean? Ah, fuck. I don't know, man. I don't know, Morse. Heaven, soul, Buddha. Buddha? No, nope, I'm dead. <laughs> Dark signs around my throat like a noose. That oxygen in my brain and instantly shuts down. Ah, bleh. Hope you know, Mor know Morse code, bitch. Heaven. Soul, apparently. I have no idea how you read Morse code. I thought it would be like one for every, like a dash and then a dot and a dot were like each character. So I was like, I was trying to base it on the number of characters I thought was there, but I guess soul then. Need more souls. Hear a quiet voice. Point to your uh oh. Point to my head, point to my heart, point to my stomach. Heart. Really? How? I. Ugh. You know what? Let's just avoid this for now. Let's just avoid this. I'm actually going to turn back. Just know the presence following. I managed to escape. Okay. So, I think. Uh, clearly, I still don't have enough info for this. I'm, I'm, I'm like doing it through process of elimination, but that's, I mean, come on. Let's see if we can actually piece this through, like, piece through this normally. Let's look around the other areas. What the fuck? The dry blood is blackened on the floor. It was quite a lot. Whoever left it prob probably died. Seems like they've died many times now. Oh, God, more doo doo. <laughs> Every time I look at that fucking pipe. All right, uh, two spots to the left and right. It looks like this is a dead end. Yeah. It does look like there's only a wall ahead, but... A breeze. I feel a draft coming in front from in front of us. But all that's there is a wall. No interaction, either. Really, nothing to examine? What about this end? Same thing. More blood, more door. Another one of these. Okay, just walk through this door. What the fuck? The air in this room is, a, is musty. First glance, I'd say it's part of a medical facility. 
It looks like an operating room. And the smell must be. Oh, there it is. Yashiki, sorry, but could you shine the light over there? What is it? So the flashlight's directed. And find a corpse. Damon crashes down and begins to study it. Whoa, it's pretty old. You might be better off having an archaeologist or anthropologist look at this. Damon skillfully examines the body. When they're done, they stand up again. The corpse is odd. Extremely odd. The cervical vertebrae is severed. But the cut's a mess. Some kind of small bladed object it did most likely. Though it clearly wasn't cut with a surgical tool. I cannot even imagine why someone would do something so cruel. The head was severed with a tool, huh? It's too old. The corpse isn't enough. Someone should have left behind records. It might be wise to search the room. Yeah, good idea. What even was it? A dog? Ooh, don't do that. Fucking squelchy sounds. Ugh. The research lab looks more like an operating room. The state's in and suggests that inhumane experiments took place here. We'd like to leave this place, but we need to to thoroughly check for any documents or tools left behind. Hatred clogs the air here, making it more dangerous than any of the other places we've been. We could be attacked any time. We must be prepared. Looks like it's been a number of years since this person died. Is it it's actually a dude? The dry skin gives the appearance of a mummy. The cut by the neck is jagged. Must be some kind of some kind of cut with some kind of tool. Oh, it is. Yeah, so I just look. It, it, I look like that was like the head down there, but now I see it's the legs. Okay. I think it's inside the metal cabinet. A rusted filing cabinet. It's a well-built cabinet. Whatever's inside should be intact. When I open the door, a cloud of dust flies up and blocks my vision. A notebook with a black cover is left inside. Experiment Unit Correspondence Code. Experiment Unit Correspondence Code. It seems to be a document about cryptograms. Inside it says... Canon Weapons Code Name. Dot 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 dash dot dot dash dash. Heavenly Buddha. Project's Code Name. Oh, here's that. This is how you figure out... This is how you figure out what, that it would be heaven. Is based on this. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. No, I'm sorry. That that soul is on this. Soul. Human heads used as materials. Oh, hey. Human heads is in the head. Looks like a Waban code. Similar to Morse. Oh, similar to Morse. Okay. It's a, ga a cabinet with a glass door. So there's something inside of it. I open it and search the side. Find a notebook towel, research records, and a small gun. The notes have, been de have deteriorated, but I can just make out what they say. 70th. Ne next experiment, Ashra statue, Khan. Male body and female head. Success. Then, supernatural phenomenon. Spirit, frequent, hard, continue experiments. That's all it says. Research records 2 and palm pistol. It seems to be a record of the experiments performed here. How fascinating. Hmm. I think it might be all that's in here. Palm pistol, a small palm-sized gun developed by the army for self-defense. A number of unsolved issues, such as holding only one bullet and its unreliability, causes development to be canceled. Hold a singular bullet. Not super effective. Okay. Well, we do have our answers then for this spot. Let's try this again. Okay, to the head. Anything else? There we go. The beeping suddenly stops. Seriously? Amazing. A real supernatural event. Damon seems pleased. Glad you enjoyed it. Did you enjoy dying a few times with me? 
I'm sure this will happen again, but there's no need to tell him that. Is he safe now? Yeah, probably. Hmm, then let's keep moving. Another mark, same as... Same as all the other ones. Okay, door's unlocked. Similar looking room. It's not the same way as that operating room. This place may have been used for the same experiments. I hope there are experiment notes. Now let's get searching. Another dead... Guys, fucking... Stop with the sound! Looks like it's been a number of years since this person died. The giraffe skin gives the appearance of a mummy. Uh, cut by the neck, okay, similar to the other one. Open the wire mesh door and peek inside, but I don't see anything. I go to close the door and see a paper stuck on the back side. Ha-ha! Thank you. Metal cabinet. Some of the doors are open, but most are locked tight. I search the ones that are open. I find a notebook titled Research Records and an Army Short Sword. The letters in the notebook have faded, but I can still read it. The experiment miraculously succeeded this divine protection. The Az Azura statue, donated from H Shrine, created by line statue makers. Using chisel, donated by same family, se severe head? Sever head? Tool together becomes the key. Finally, our dearest wish. There's nothing else written. Records one uh, projectile short sword. It mentions a chisel. Does it mean those used for sculpting? Yeah, most likely. It's hard to believe, but did they actually use that to sever the heads? Ugh. Yeah, I think I think I meant to say sever there, but I, they added an e on it, so it's says severe. It was a typo. It's unbelievable doing something like that. Ugh. Gross. Something inside? Okay. Open and search around. I find bells attached to a handle in a notebook with a black cover. It's titled Disposal Vat Management Record. I flip the cover open. Dispose 200 Super Dimension Suddenly Iron Door Half Spiritualized? Hypothesize focused mystical forces need secret objects to erase. Safety valve release code diamond. There's nothing else written. Kagura Suzu Bell's disposal vat management record. What in the world are these notes going on about? Disposal half spiritualization? I don't understand half of these words. Plus those bells I found don't fit this place at all. I close the notebook and put it in my bag. Just then, something tangles around my hand. Whoa, what the hell? Huh? It's a thin thread. It seems to be human hair. It glitters pale gold in the light. What? The mark starts sucking at my blood. I ignore it and instead stare at the shining hair as it's being pulled in. It's odd, but I get the real feeling that... This moment... No. It's here. This place. I... I've been here... before! Urgh. Color grows more vivid. A few hours left until we fucking die. Mumble, 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 mumble. Someone mumbles right next to me. Wait, that's not someone else. That's my own voice. As I thought, it's here. The words pour out from deep inside. I have absolutely no knowledge or control over them. The memories in our mind, words and feelings I couldn't possibly know are falling from my lips. Check the disposal vat. It must be hidden behind that wall. I felt weird when standing in front of that wall. Yashiki, what's this all of a sudden? The instant Damon speaks, the voice stops. It's nothing. I just... Remember something important. Are you honestly alright? Those were some rather odd numbers. I'm fine, really. Just spaced out for a bit. For better or worse, Damon didn't clearly hear what I was saying. Still though, that voice... Could it be that? 
my old self, the one I lost along with my memories, was talking to me. I was wondering, is that who's been talking to me this whole time and trying to help me? Or was that the bunny in those instances? The feeling I got when I saw that golden hair. Maybe that's what, what triggered it. Haven't heard that other guiding voice for a while now. Oh, I guess all I can do is rely on my old self. Oh, hey, no. Okay, that, that, he said right there, so that seems like that was different. This is different. Disposal of that beyond the wall. Voice said to find that. I'm thinking it was the bunny, but the bunny is dead now. In lab number one. We found documents in a Kagura Suzu bell in the cabinet. The files are saying odd. Spiritualize the door, release with sacred object. The Kagura Suzu bell is probably considered one. We also learned the safety valve release password is diamond. I'm bothered by thin blonde hair and found between the pages. The moment I wonder if a foreigner was here. I hear a voice saying, check the disposal vat. What? The It's not the usual whisper in my ears. My own voice. I have no control over my mouth as it moves on its own. Are the fragments of my memory causing this? It keeps going. It's probably behind that wall. So weird. It's like I have some special power. Power of a god. So range short sword. Also, shoot sword blade. I'm like, wait. It is a fucking what? A prototype weapon developed by the army in the shelter. A spring is installed in the hilt, but it, it's so flimsy that it's destroyed after one use. So it's never officially adopted. Oh, I was like, what am I doing? Throwing the sword? Kagura Suzu Bell, a bell used in the ancient Shinto dance rituals. It has three sets of small bells, seven, five, and three. Also called a Miko Bell. It's meant to be used by shrine maidens. Hmm. Okay, let's go down the left path now. There were dead ends back the other way I went, which is probably what he might is referring to. But, is there anything over here? Is this locked? It's a thick iron door. If the key is not rust, I could open it if I had the key. Okay. Never mind, I can't go this way, so... Yeah, I think those that dead ends are what we need to check out. Oh, ah, oh, my uh, mind's eye, I can see it. We'll go north of the intersection and an outline of a door is flickering faintly in the wall in the wall ahead of us. Hey, look at that. Huh? What? Are you seeing odd things again? He's not seeing it. You can't see it? Unfortunately, no. Looks like Damon can't see the door. Mumble, mumble. That's the spiritual. My mouth begins mumbling words I don't recognize on its own. Oppose the spiritual within spiritual. If you touch it with a tool that honors the gods. The flow of words out of my mouth stops. Touch it with a tool that honors the gods. Flickering half spirit door. Like the bells? There's a passage beyond the intersection that looks like a dead end. An iron door flickers in and out, and for whatever reason, I'm the only one who can see it. I can't believe this. Do I realize some sort of spiritual power? Oppose the spiritual with the spiritual. So do I have a use a sacred object? Or maybe sacred objects are effective against spiritual beings? Better remember that. Okay. The Suzu Bell? Take out the, the Kagura Suzu Bell. Is just touching it okay? No. I have to. <laughs> Strange words fall, words spill from my lips again. It's the priestess's tool. If a man displays spiritual power, he'll be destroyed. So touch it silently. All I have is questions, but I have no choice but to trust the other me. I touch the bells to the door carefully, making sure not to make any noise. My ears! Made no noise with that shit! That shit did! Next is that the door fiscally appears. What? Wait. I'm not hallucinating, am I? I'm completely shocked. What magic did you conjure to do this? It just felt like it was the right thing to do. But... I stare at the door. I sense an alarming presence. According to my own voice, if I can call it that, the disposal vat is beyond this door. I found some documents about it in the room with the operating table. Might be good to look through those. Let's be careful. That place is giving me a bad feeling. Oh, I gotta be ready then. Disposal vat. 
two dispose 200 super dimension iron door half specialized hypothesized mystical forces need separate sacred object to erase so the the safety valve release code is diamond better fucking save i push open the iron door and we head inside uh-oh whoa this is amazing on the other side of the door is a large, empty area reminiscent of a vault. Is this the disposal vat? Are these the Buddha heads? Buddha statues? It should be, but it's not quite what I expected. Something's on the ground. Hmm. Looks like a sword. Rusted army sword. I take what Damon picked up. I shine the flashlight around the area. Are these heads of Buddha statues? They're kind of just scattered around. This might be a garbage dump. Just then. Ah! Huh? A sound echoes off something heavy moving. And suddenly the room is lit with a pale light. I have a rather bad feeling. Let's get out of here for now. Try to open the door to get out, but... What? It's locked. Impossible. What in the fuck? A cutting coldness invades and envelops my feet. My head snaps up and I see water pouring to the room like a giant waterfall. Water! It's ice cold. A polar bear sw swim is not something I ever want to do. It's quickly rising to our knees. I can't even feel my feet anymore. Ugh. Water underground. We have to get out of here. We'll die of hypothermia. Oh boy. Live or die. I have to remember. What was written in those documents about the disposal vat? All I see near me are the Buddha's heads. Uh, diamond. Touch the diamond our hot head. There's a heavy shudder in the sound of movement. Then the pooling water suddenly starts sweeping in one direction, down to a drain. Whoa! <laughs> it's pulling us in. Okay. We drain the water, but also ourselves. When I open my eyes, all I see is darkness. <clears throat> I quickly lift my head and rub my eyes. My vision slowly comes back. We got flushed! This is... The intersection of the underground shelter. It's like we drained out with the water and flushed down a pipe. We were lucky. I very nearly breathe a sigh of relief. But then I remember Damon. That's right. Where's Damon? No need to be so worried. Oh, not who I expected. Haha, -ha, so it's you. It's been a while, you sneaky intruder. It's that old man I met up in the passageway beneath Manhole Street. Try to ask him about Damon, but... <coughs> my jaw is nearly locked. My voice is gone. Don't try to talk just yet. The water here comes straight from the Team Mountain Range. So steadily cold. You were submerged in it for near an hour, so you'll be slurring your words for a while. Relax, relax, your friend's fine. So you, uh, got somewhere to go back to? <clears throat> I nod as I groan. The old man's face brightens like the sun. Well, that's great! Not that I'm demanding a reward for saving you anything. But I am pretty darn hungry. The man eyes me, his smile sharp. Fine. Get in the car, old man. We're going to Mickey D's. I want a happy meal. We get in the car, and even though it's the wrong season for it, I turn the heat on full blast. We dry off with towels and the like, but it doesn't stop our shivering for a long time. 
What's going on? The old man. Whew! It's hot! <laughs> Get out of the window! He's blatantly fanning himself in front of us. Okay, yes, in a way we owe him our lives. Even so, he's being a pain. Hang in there a little while longer. Damon shudders. You can see us shivering, can't you? How selfish can you get? It was an honest question. It probably sucks for him. But we still keep the keep the car like a sauna. After driving like that for a while, our teeth finally stopped chattering. The man's name is Banshee Ito. That's how he introduced himself. Banshee? That's obviously isn't his real name. As he sits next to me, Banshee gets off a savory smell, like freshly baked bread. Does he have the mark on him too? It kind of cheers me up. Or at least it does for a few moments till I realize it's the stench of a dried, f of dried filth. So, Banshee, what are you doing in a place like that? Banshee remains silent. Are you listening to me? Don't feel up to talking yet. I tell you, in exchange for food. Shouldn't be surprised. Life's rough. Wait. Wait! That should be my question. What were you two doing down there? It's a long story. I summarize everything we know about the spirits in the mark until I catch up to when we met him in the underground shelter. Mmm. Mmm. So that's how it is, huh? He nods vigorously to himself. I wonder if you truly understand, old man. Damon's doubts are reasonable, but Banshee waves a hand dismissively. Of course I do. Who do you think I am? A terrible grudge is mucking up that underground shelter. And you guys are wrapped up in it now. His story suddenly sounds fishy. A grudge. Banshee. Do you know what happened down there? I said I'm not talking about that yet. I was born into a noble family, so I've always had the ability to see things others can't. I stick my name, Banchito, on it, so you can trust me. There's a terrible grudge swirling there, and you've gotten swept up in it. He's got nothing to base his claims on, but I get the feeling he's on the right track. In that case, Oh, noble Lord Banshee, would you tell us? How do we overcome that whirlpool? Banshee replies with a magnanimous flourish. That should be obvious. Whirlpools always have a center. You gotta find that. The center? That swirling grudge and that spirit thing? Is that what you called it? The birth of the spirit, the heart of the curse. Something like that should be left within that there swirling grudge. If you look for that, I'm sure then. Trails off. He gazes at the dark road, his mouth hanging open. It's like he's run out of batteries. Then what will happen? Black sky simply goes on forever before Banshee's eyes. Do we even have any food in here? Actually, I think we mentioned this before. We've just been like getting shit from like convenience stores. Like fucking, fucking microwave burritos. Uh oh, that reminds me of Shiki. Who's talking? Oh, that reminds me, Shiki. Batch calls out as soon as we enter the garage. Take this. Just a little symbol of our friendship. Underground shelter key. It's the key for the underground shelter. No duh, didn't you read the name? Mm-hmm. Found it when I was popping in and out from that place. I held on to it. But I'll lend it to you for now, yeah, Shiki. He just picked it picked it up. Why is he acting like it's a favor? But I have no reason to refuse him. Thanks. I'll borrow it. This guy doesn't mention if he has a mark or anything. Hero walks up to us. Oh, welcome back. Learn anything? Damon busts in before I can speak. Wait a second. You're not really considering. You haven't fallen for that suspicious old man's story, have you? Wow, that's rude. If you want my opinion, a slightly punk like you should be trusted even less. Of course, Yashiki. You believe me, right? Of course, I don't know. 
What did you say? Ugh, my heart hurts. Sorry, old man, but he's exactly right. Anyway, changing the subject. Good grief. Can we just move on from talking about this? Banshee, you're hungry, right? The dining room should have something. Woo! Food! Food! Banshee bolts out of the garage and vanishes into the mansion. I mean, why do you mean, like, I act a surprised old man? You literally didn't tell me anything. You didn't tell me dick, dude. There's, like, more to the story you're not telling me. You're like, ah, I just gotta eat some fucking Tostitos chips or something. Here gives me an ex exasperated look. Mr. Yashiki, you've got a crazy one on your hands this time. Don't give me that look. Stop it. To appease the starving Banshee, I offer him some cup noodles and sweet buns. He looks over at Hero and is like, I'll have some of her sweet buns if you know what I mean. Ha ha! Psh, ah! The epitome of hungry, he greedily begins scarfing it down like a starving dog. I always thought the sound of somebody chewing on eyeballs anymore. That was enough for ten people. He devours all of it, and I'm reminded of a high vacuum, a high power vacuum cleaner. Excellent! 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 I have been this fool in forever! Ah, glad to hear it. Mind answering some questions? Why were you down in that shelter? Well, that's an easy one. Because it's my home. What? Been living there ever since I found it ten years ago. It's not too shabby a place. Keeps me out of the rain. No damn brats messing with me. Though it gets a mock cold in winter. don't know how to respond to that. Hero and Damon seem to be the same. It was a paradise for me because no one knows about it. Until a weirdo showed up six months ago. Some woman doused in perfume. It was winter, and I don't like stirring up troubles, so I just stayed away. That must have been Sukawa. I nod. That was my thought as well. That was a month ago. I figured she must have up and left, so I went back. But now there's something stranger. Which was... A damn walking Buddha statue! What the hell? I know I'm pretty out there, but I, even I was shot by that. I haven't got this weird scar. Oh, he does have it. Bench removes the scarf, revealing the mark on his neck. You may not believe this, but... That statue gave you that scar. I figured it was that cannon soldier after all. The cannon soldier? How do you know that name? Some documents I saw had it. It was an old plan to make a Buddha statue move with supernatural powers. A heavenly Buddha project weapon. <laughs> That's some crazy shit right there. Are you nuts? Spare powers making something move. That's insane. Now, now, Hiru, calm down. So, those documents that you found, are they still around? Nope, I burnt them for warmth. I had a delicious roasted potato, too. <coughs> how, how could you? <coughs> Maybe take your own advice, Dr. Damon. Our measure of common sense seems to be rather different than this strange old man's. This man just lives by the day, right? Lives for the moment. It's fine. My noggin works different from most people's. I got it all memorized. You got it memorized? As you say, just tell us. We need to know about that project. He's actually a genius. He's just kind of lazy. <laughs> the Heavenly Buddha project was the pet project of some general at the end of the war. So they built that shelter for it. Ta-da! The 13th Army Engineering Lab. To make the cannon soldier thing, they did test some Buddha statues. They were brought from some shrines or something somewhere. That must be each shrine. They did a bunch of stuff to infuse the statues with spiritual power. There was a monk from T-Mountain. Spiritual treasures from all over. 
but nobody thought anything could actually come from it. The product was just an excuse to keep that fr fanatical general busy. At least, it was supposed to. But one day, that statue started moving. It went berserk, broke the lab, and went crazy on a ton of people. The blood stains and cold corpses in the shelter are probably the victims. Shit just fucking stay there forever, huh? It's been there for fucking a billion years. Some people survived, but they had red bite-like marks on them. The thing that went and wrecked the place then stopped and never moved again. No one knows what even triggered it. That's about everything it said. <laughs> Here on Damon, I was watching the sheet. I probably am too. It's a hard story to believe, but he has no reason to lie to us. I think he speaks the truth. What? Are you kidding me? A statue going around killing people and cursing them? Impossible. Then how do you explain the mark on his neck? Logic would dictate that the moving statue he saw was the cannon soldier. Gah! The Dorman soldier suddenly starts moving after 50 years. That might be the cause of mine and Hero's marks. Well, if you flip, flip that, though, both of your, your grandpas got the mark from the cannon soldier. When the soldier stopped moving, their marks disappeared. But when it started up again, you got them because you're the descendants. If that's true, then the children inherited their parents' fate. We were, can't seem to muster up any kind of counter-argument. Makes us in shock. <laughs> so, I can't talk my way out of this shit! I want to ask you something, old man. You say the cannon soldiers stopped moving 50 years ago. But why? Uh, I think it was. Some spiritual person used a thingamajig to do something. So you have no idea. It's the most important part. Try to remember. Mm, eh, it's not that easy, son. The mark might have made me forget. Taking his age into account, it's more likely he just completely slipped his mind. It seems we must defeat the cannon soldier to be free of our marks. We'll have to figure out it out on our own, if we can't be of more help. You seem a pro at this, Yashiki. We'll be relying on you. At this point, I fucking am. I don't have any spiritual powers or anything. But you've already faced down four different spirits, haven't you? A normal person wouldn't have survived. Now that he says it, I guess he's right. I have been hearing a mysterious voice a few times, and having weird premonitions. I even caught myself unconsciously talking when we were down in the shelter. So, what are you folks gonna do now? Good question. Investigate the soldier, investigate the statues, investigate the project. Soldier. Let's investigate the soldier in the shelter. We need to do something about that to get rid of your marks. If I'm descended from someone on the project, then mine might disappear too. But probably not. I guess we're going back in, back in then. Hero's still kind of sulking, but she's at least recovered from her shock. We all share the same fate. It's too late to try to run away. Yep, you should find it there. The heart of everything that's causing the curse. You need that to stop the cannon soldier. That's what my gut's telling me. What are you going to do then? I'm full now, so I was going to go take a nap in that park nearby. I'll sit and wait until you fellas do something about that soldier. Really? You're not going to... Okay, you're not one of my partners then? Wait just a minute, you old fart. Didn't we just say that it's too late to run away? Okay, okay, I get it. Well, you folks did feed me, so I guess I can help you. Okay, here we go. The underground shelters inha inhabitants, other. Somehow we make it out of the freezing water trap in dis disposal vat, return to the mansion with a strange homeless man calling himself Banshee Ito. He's been living in that shelter and has a surprising info. He says he saw Tsukawa going in and out, and then saw a Buddha statue walking around. He tells us of some research documents he had to burn for warmth. 
He details something called the Heavenly Buddha Project, some mumbo jumbo about using spiritual powers to make a spirit a statue into a weapon. They gathered numerous sacred objects, including a massive number of statues from the shrine in each city. There was no way it'd work. The war was almost over, but it moved. The spirit weapon named the Cannon Soldier moved. So this thing's just literally gonna be a giant Buddha statue? I don't know how freaky that's gonna be. This is like a really weird looking one. Or it's all gnarly. The soldier went berserk in the, sta the shelter and killed people. Those who escaped had a scar. Most likely the mark. What's alarming, though, hard to believe, is the walking statue Banshee saw. And when that's when he got the mark, which means the can soldier is moving once more. That might be why da Damon and Hiru, to sense of those involved, now have the marks as well. It's unclear what made the soldier move, past or present, but we have to find a way to stop it. Maybe there are records of how they stopped it 50 years ago. Banshee doesn't remember, only it's that some person with spiritual power used something to do something. I guess we'll have to do is search the shelter. I have to trust both my, trust both my past and present self. Yeah, exactly what was he doing there to begin with? All right, let's bring Banshee this time. Strange vagrant. Excellent. Excellent. What do you think, Mary? I'm still dead. Damn it. What do you think, Sofa-sama? Well, I think it's a delightful idea. Oh, thank you, Sofa-sama. All right, well, we have a key. We can access some new areas, too. I didn't check the other end of that uh, dead end, either. Might be worth checking out. Going down. So I assume now I can go through this. Open the door with the underground shelter key. What the fuck is that? There's a single out of place Buddha statue. Its head has been cut off. And a chest. It's a Buddha statue. The headless Buddha statue is covered in dust. The talisman stuck to the neck as if it's been taking the place of the missing head. Thank you. The light bulb's covered in dust. It's obvious no one has touched it in a long time. Why is such an old bump still working? Big iron box. Then layer of dust on it, but it looks fairly intact. Yeah. Mm, well, that's ominous. The box is packed with curiously tossed Buddha statue heads. And maybe some also real human heads. <laughs> A real actual head can't be clearly seen among them. It's dried and mummified, but going by the long hair, it's probably female. Most likely one of the experiment's victim victims. Huh. So this is where it was. Let's take it and bring it to its owner. I thought you'd say that. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> Feel Banshee's gaze on me. Hmm. The box in Warehouse 1. I can only carry one head. I need to choose which one to take. Oh, interesting. Uh, Merciful. So I put on here, maybe? Do I not put it on this? Merciful Buddha head. A... I don't from the box full of Buddha and human heads. Cut looks like it was made with a chisel. It boasts a benevolent expression. <laughs> Why? Why did it do that? Fuck you, game. Oh. Oh, I, I, oh God damn it. Fuck. I pulled a muscle and made me jump. Ow. Pitch black stains. Oh, we're going to do something about this now? Oh, that's the place where the war propaganda post is. They got some interesting slogans. Slogans? On posters? Come on, what the hell are you talking about? If you squint real hard, you can see them. See? See what? The words on the posters that were put up here forever ago, of course. I told you earlier, I was born to a family chock full of spiritual power. So I'm good at seeing spiritual stuff. Are you serious? I can do a test reading for you. Ask me anytime. Man, she laughs. Can I really believe him? Interesting. Let me. What, what is his? Yeah, he's got 12. It's pretty high. Everything else is pretty low. Man, she stands in front of the dark stains. Let's see here. 100 million honorable deaths. The land of the gods is indestructible. That's what it says. He's from the end of the war. They're pretty desperate, Saturn. Hmm. 
Okay. I have a feeling this one might be more complicated than the other ones. It's like I'm gonna have to pick up a specific head and... I don't know. I feel like this is determining maybe what... It, for the, the battle itself, you know? Well, what about this one? Mm, let's take a look-see. Luxury is the enemy. <laughs> Simple as best. That's a real famous one. Back when the war just started. I can't actually make this, like, show up with this, can I? No. <laughs> Put, like, the bell on there. Okay, another one over here. Let's see here. Suppress your desires until we win. Work harder and harder. Not hard enough? Those are slogans I can see. Oh, these are the most famous ones. They're from the middle of the wall. Okay. Let's check this dead end over here. Oh, interesting. It's, this one is actually just a dead end. Okay, this one over here. Mm, let's take a look-see. Give birth for the sake of the country. Send for the hundred million fireballs. Stuff like that. Mm, those are pretty passionate. They're from when we were still winning. This is all going to tie into something. All right. The iron door. In we go. Around here? No. We do another crossroad. What the fuck? Near victory chant coming from the other side of the intersection. Turn back. No, I guess that is, uh... Man, I checked everywhere else, so... Where we gotta go. I'm sure I can keep moving forward. I'll take one step forward, and... Electric current runs through my body and my muscles seize up. Time to live or demon die. Okay, this is probably... I'm gonna probably test it on the posters here. You lay about, what are you doing there? You have time to be loafing around, do you? We'll sign this base's slogan at once. Cheer for the final battle in the homeland. The final battle, huh? 100 million honorable deaths. Yeah. What's more, declare our resolve to strike back with air raids. We won't lose even our country's loose to ashes. Show your determination. Express your desires until we win and send forth 100 million fireballs. Like that. You won't pitch your eye, piece of shit. Oh. Shit. I guess not. Our army has fought bravely from the southern tropics to the northern uh, Arctic. The tide does not turn in our favor. What do you think? Can we win this crusade? We should surrender if the kamikaze wind blows. There's a chance. Yeah, there we go. A oh, pretty pops of a new recruit. Keep a good eye on the squad. Farewell. All right. Whew. Good thing I found those towels, man. Did I did kind of eat shit at one point there? There's number of numerous footprints in the blood stains on the floor. These human footprints, or all right, let's go left. Hey, dead guy. Human bones. Looks like the person was crushed to death. Something is written on the wall in blood. It says I. Actually, yeah, so wait. I just said I just said it. Her name's I. I like just like that girl that we met before. Her name was I. So it is I. Never mind. I keep saying A, so it is I. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why that one confused me the most. I think I just get mixed up with the German stuff. It is I. Is her name that her her name was I, so his name would be then Diamond. I was right the first time. The iron door. Key all's at rust. I can open if I have the key. Do I have the key? Yes, I do. I don't know why this is locked. Huh? Couldn't come down here earlier anyway. More dead people. It's the operating room in the southern section. But on the table is. Well, how about that? A dead body. Headless corpse is lying there. 
You ever seen a dead body before? Yes, a lot, actually, at this point. And those corpses lying on top of the operating table. That I picked up earlier might fit on this corpse's neck. Should I try attaching the head? Ah, uh, okay. So I should have grabbed the human head. I'm just curious, what happens if I put this on here? Try attaching the merciful Buddha head. But it doesn't fit very well. Ah, okay. Gotcha. It's missing not only its head, but also all of its limbs. What kind of torture was this? Ah, fuck you! Ah, stop it! It's a well-built metal cabinet. Let's see. Door is locked! Headless corpse. Going by what remains is cloth. It was likely a woman. Let's make sure that there isn't like a statue or something or also around here that I might be able to use the merciful Buddha statue on or head on. Oh, that looks nice. The door is stained with blood. Upon closer look, it's countless handprints. The keyhole is perfectly fine. I could open the door if I had the key. And I sure do. But I turn the knob to go in. The door doesn't open. Oh, what's the fuss? The door won't open. I'm sure I unlocked it, though. I turn the key again just to double check. But I was right. It's unlocked. What's going on? I try turning the knob slowly, but it stops moving halfway. It's almost as if someone on the other side is pushing against us to keep it closed. Ugh. It seems the dead are rejecting us. Read all the records. Speak to that woman. All the records and that woman. Are the records referring to the research records? I'm trying to prompt my old self into answering. There's no reply. No choice left. I turn to Banshee. Let's keep looking. We can come back here later. Could be something we still need to do. Hmm. Okay. To the right. More dead people. Abandoned skeleton. The bleached corpse is weathered in places. Something is in his bony hand. Managed to pry it out. The whole corpse looks like it might crumble any second. Hey, Arag! Give me that healing. Oh, hey! Fucker. Little sneaky bitch. The iron door. Opened. Uh-oh. Music suddenly stopped. Ooh, there's hair over here. Ugh. Oh. We're back. We're back to the entrance. This is, this is where we were uh, before. We have now made the full loop. If I climb the ladder, I can get above ground. But first... Hmm. I think I actually interact with over here. Check make sure there's nothing outside here. This is back to all the, where all the manholes are. Climbing out of the manhole, we see that we're on Kia Miyamachi's Red North Road. We managed to find a way out. We're we'll going to go back to the mansion for now. It'd be a pain to get back to M New South Alley for the car, but might be worth going back to the mansion. Really? Hmm. That's that woman. I'm almost wondering should I bring Hiro with me again? Or maybe meant the the woman, the severed head of the woman. That might be it. Ah, now I can go to either one. Cool. I'm gonna go to South Alley. Woman's head. All right. Try this head. Try touching the human head. The human head fits the severed neck perfectly. The world suddenly distorts. Ugh. Ugh. Horrific scene appears before my eyes. This is the woman on the operating table. Some kind of experiment has been performed on her. I must be seeing the past. Ugh! The sound triggers a change in views. Men in lab coats holding surgical tools. But they don't look like they're alive. The ghosts of the researchers seem to be stuck forever in the nightmare of the past. I can hear the men whisper from my left side. Hey, she's awake. Don't worry. She'll be dead soon anyway. 
True enough. Then something else interrupts. You. This time it's a cold whisper from my right. You can hear me, can't you? Don't be afraid. Soon. The voice on my right cuts off and I can hear the men in the lab cuts again. What the fuck? Hey, woman. Which of these tools do you want us to, to use to cut your neck? This is it for you, so we'll let you decide. Ugh. A chisel. Ugh. Ha! <laughs> Good answer. You're pretty smart. Fortunately, you'll soon be saying goodbye to that clever head of yours. It's valuable material. We'll cut it off nicely. Ugh. Gotta pick the, the weird one. Slurp. Shut up, you're just like a pig. This is why I hate handling women. Be patient. We finally found a clue. Not yet, wait. Now, give you power. Whisper from my right falls silent. Yeah, I never dreamed breaking from our usual method would go so well. Hey, pig, do you understand? Do you know the other, the correct combination of head and body for the heavenly Buddha? Uh. Female head, male body. Precisely, and that's why we need your head. Gladly offered up for the sake of our beloved country. Ugh. Blah, blah, blah. My soul alive, god damn! The problem is the soul freshness. Regardless of refrigeration, it's all up to the quality of the cut. Though there are only so many available methods, this is all the equipment we have. Then to the freezer. Boys on the left cut out. A turn voice echoes on my right ear. Hate, hate, hate. Hate this world. Tear it to pieces. The power to do that. I'll give it all to you. In the place where you hear me now. Hate them. Destroy them. Understand? Oh, wow. Yes, yes, or yes. Hmm, choices. Yes. This is the- this is the spirit that's trapped in the cannon soldier right now. It was given to her by whatever the fuck this voice is. Good. Destroy. Them. When I return to my senses, I'm standing beside the operating table. Just then something slides out of the hand of the corpse on the table. Small key, all right. What I just saw. No, more importantly, the voice that kept, kept speaking from my right side. Who was that? You don't look so good. Do you see something weird again? Yeah, actually. I explained to her what I just saw. Horrible tragedy happened here in the past. It's possible that whatever triggered it might have been whoever that voice belonged to. Who cares about that? Erasing the mark is more important right now. Well, I'm not sure about that part, but... He was right. This isn't helping us accomplish our goal. We need to search for whatever gave birth to the spirit. Let's keep looking. The small key just found might belong to the cabinet here. I drew my attention to the mark on my wrist. It isn't coming yet. I glance over at Hiru. They don't seem to be acting differently at all. Death should be closing in on us, but it seems we still have some time. Support right now is making sure we survive. Okay. Mysterious human experiments. Uh, my vision boards on return to the head to the body on the table. Is the corpse's ghost showing me the past, or is it a curse? The man in the lab has to be the ghost or of a researcher here. The two ghosts are stuck in an unending nightmare. They cut off the woman's head with a chisel, then try to attach it to the Ashura statue. As obscene, hatred overwhelms me. Just then, I hear the operating table woman's voice on my right. Hate, hate, hate. Hate the entire world and tear it to pieces. For all my strength in this place where I hear the voice, hate, kill. Sounds like a curse of some kind. What's the voice she mentioned? 
was that voice what that made the cannon soldier move? The woman's head, having gained a special power, was put on the Azura statue. The cannon soldier awoke. Either a curse or a grudge triggering its birth. Must be a spiritual being of some kind. It means I need an object with spiritual power. The Kagura Suzu bell we found is used by priestesses, so then who would be best to bring as my partner? I'm still not sure. Oh, okay, that's gonna be the old man. I need the old man for his uh, spiritual his spiritual power. So I'm about to leave again. I'm not using a small key. So has an old gun and some research records. Suddenly berserk, severe damage. Sutra chanting, complete insanity. Only those who made themselves deaf managed to remain sane. Ooh. Half spiritualized, like disposal vat. Needs sacred object, attack. Destroy human head, the heart of all this. Need to destroy human head. That's all it says. Got gun with blanks. Research records three. Oh, a gun, a gun that requires gunpowder. It's allowed to frighten animals away from crops. Use earplugs while firing it, or you won't be able to hear anything for a while. Ha ha! All right. There we go. So this will be uh, what I'll use to uh, potentially deafen myself. Excellent. All right. I think I probably do something about this door now. Put me on the knob again to turn it. When I do, it turns smoothly with no resistance. Aha! Hello there. Inside the room are a number of Buddha statues. They're all missing their heads. This is where they store all the various statues that gather through theft or donations. Hmm, this is a statue storage room. There's some angry feelings here. Oh, the head prints on the door. This has got to be the source that gave that birth to that spirit. I brace myself for input from the other me. But it doesn't seem like that's happening. Doesn't mean I should already know. So she looks like a divine general. It has armor from the Tang Dynasty. So she was held. Looks like it's held a weapon in the left hand. Looks like the Vidya Raji or something. It's missing one of its arms as well as its head. Uh oh. Ah, yeah, blood and it's gone. The Vice Rav Ravana statue is missing its head. So his head cut off. It seems to be holding some kind of Buddha Buddhist ritual implement. So he's a divine general's head has been severed. The statue with his head cut off is lying pitifully on the floor. I search all the statues. Every statue here is a male body. Suddenly, there's a sound of movement from within the box. Oh, interesting. I guess it, I guess it must have been locked. I didn't, realize, I didn't realize I needed to do that before I tried to open it. It's coated with a thin layer of dust, but it seems to be in decent enough shape. I managed to open the box. Sheets of white paper are inside. They seem to be multi a multitude of talismans. Was something sealed here? Banshee peers into the box beside me. What about it? Find anything? Well... Ah. Uh, my voice sounds distant. The cause of the curse would birth the spirit. There's nothing like that here. No. There's nothing here. Ridiculous! And what are you holding there? Angie's right. It's not true there's nothing inside. There is one thing. I never would have expected something like this. Something that doesn't belong here. A box sealed by talismans has enshrined. Uh. Western style cushion. What? A pillow from the, the mansion? From the seat that Mario always sat in? Banshee sighs, disappointed. Huh. Well, that's a bummer. No way a thing like that gave birth to a spirit. True. The state of this room. And the voices. Something important was definitely sealed up in this place at one point. Yet there's nothing here. What the hell? The thing we're searching for. Where the hell did it go? A long silence falls between us. It is then that enough familiar pain flares up. Oh. Spurn Scarlet is dyed a deep crimson. 
Death is only a few minutes away. Uh-oh. What's going on? Is death closing in on all of us all of a sudden? Holy shit! No, it's... Spirit is here. Oh, shit. Uh-oh. What the... Whoa, freaky. Oh, God. Ah! Damn, that okay, never mind. This, thing's, this thing is freaky looking. Below Sutra Chan, hum trembles there. Wow, is it it just suddenly was here. We skip we skipped the whole build up on this one. Feels like my whole body is numb. Maybe because of that hum. Okay, let's have a look at what this thing said. Those who statues of the warehouse must be the ones stolen from the shrine. I finally found them. The ones used to make the cannon soldiers were should be stored here. A box in the center has talismans plastered over it as if sealing in the source of the curse. But what if we what we find in the box? There's only a Western style cushion. That's depressing. Is the Hearth Grudge the source of the spirit? No way. Something was here. Something cursed. Something that might be able to stop the cannon soldier. As if to mock me even further, the mark warns me in time is short. We'll just have to face the soldier with what we gathered up until now. Forget what we're missing and take stock of what we have. If we want to use the saber or short sword, we'll have to throw them. If the spirit is nebulous like that spirit door, then Kaga's Suzu bat bell will be helpful. And the blankets. Uh, blanks will mess up our ears if we shoot them, but one document I mentioned must destroy the head. Not sure we're about all this, but I can't give up if I want to live. Damn, music of this one. Jesus. Well, I really don't have many options here. It's all like the weapons. I'm gonna shoot. Blow out our ears. Grab the gun, but I can't control my hand. It turns the gun towards my head and fires? The blank explodes. My conscious fades. Oh. There's a strong ring in my ears that's preventing me from hearing the suture chant. Banshee's clutching their head like they can't hear anything either. The illness is faded. Wow. Nothing happens. Sir, Kagura Suzu Bell flies into the air. You get the feeling that we're not using it right. We're injured, but I think we're okay. Oh, the, I think the bell's shattered. Oh, I think we're fucked already. Mm, oh, it's probably... You probably need the pistol to blow the head up, and this is probably destroying it. Destroying it? And then the bells are the right way to do it. I'm gonna bet. The spirit phase becomes intangible. Oh. Uh-oh. In close. Oh, actually, I think this, is, this might be where I need to... But I can't do anything now. Actually, I don't have too many options here. Can I actually make him not do anything? Is that an option? I don't know if it is. We'll pass through the spirit. So we're getting injured, though. Ah! Ah! Try this shit. The slight scraped the spirit's by, but overall wasn't effective. Blah, blah, blah. Cook him out of kata. There's some darkness. I see spirits slowly drawing closer. Oh, yeah. Okay. So. Maybe I need to do the range short sword first and then gun with blanks. Let's try that. Ah! Ashki was injured. Wait, what? I'm sort of spirit, but again, oh, oh, okay, no, that's just automatically. No, I, I was right. Okay, so if I if I don't, I got it, I got it. If I if I don't do the blanks one first, then he will. Uh, yeah. So this was his infinite use, but for some reason it seemed like shattered when I used it. Okay, let's try that Kagura Suzu Bell. I'm gonna fire again, and then spirit turns solid again. Kagura Suzu Bell flies into the air. I get a feeling that we're not using it right. Really? I feel like we used it right. We made him tangible again. Boom. Oh, but he's intangible again. So I get like one use out of it? It's so weird. And then death. 
I think I might need to wait till it's actually on my ass, then use the bells, and then use, like, the rusted army sword. Interesting, but then I, I have actually no choice. But, okay, no, I think this is fine. Then I'll just use it here. Make it tangible. So I kind of thought I'd save it maybe for the last turn. Now, go for the head. Spirit face comes intangible. No. I think I'm actually missing something here. This doesn't seem possible the way, the, the way it's given right now. Hmm. I wonder if it's like... I, so I looked around. I didn't see anything. I'm almost wondering, maybe I just have the wrong partner here. I'm thinking maybe I need him, actually. I thought I need someone with really... Does he have good spiritual power? No, he doesn't. But he's dexterous. The old man isn't. I think he's shaking it too much. No, it still happened even with him. It flies in the air. So like, but I can only seemingly use it once. Is this supposed to happen? The only thing I can think of is Hiru. Maybe it has to be a lady? Is that what it said at one point? That I need to be a woman? Clearly something isn't right though. I don't know. Oh, it did. It worked. Okay. That, it must be. The bell didn't fly off this time. No, you know what it is? You know what it is. The idea is that it, the only shrine maidens could use the, the the Suzu bells, the Shinto shrine bells. And that that's what it is. That's what it is. So the guys can't do it. So it has to be Hiro. Okay. All right. I think now I just need to damage. I think I think I'm actually good now. I think actually seemingly I'm actually all about damaging this thing. Then use the bell to bring it back. Yeah. There we go. Ow. And the short range sword and then this. Yeah. Here we go. That's the wham the double whammy. Ow. Now while it's right, right up in my grill. Open wide, lady. Here, she got like her, like the size of her mouth, like cut up into her face there. It's so weird looking. All right. Eat shit, bitch. Spirit phase becomes tangible. Spirit stops. I guess the attack finally worked. Out of nowhere, footsteps approach behind me. Oh, it's the doc. You're coughing. And whoever it is, put their hand on my back. Diamond, is it you? What are you doing here? Instead of replying, you shove something into my hand. It's a large chisel with the grip stained in blood. This is... I found it in that room in the mansion. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. What the fuck does that mean? One of the people back at... One of the... Kujo people was like, but it was like, was it like the same person that made Mary essentially made this thing? And then it says, I understand everything. The heart of the curse that we are searching for, the object that gave birth to the spirit. So it's kept in Kujo Mansion. Thanks, I'm going to use it. I grab the chisel and face the spirit. Large chisel, eat shit, bitch. Uh, where should I strike with the chisel? The right eye, the left eye, between the eyes, the right ear, the left ear. Oh, right ear. I received a whisper in my right ear. I ja 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 the chisel at his right ear. <laughs> just tap that shit in there while she just stands there motionless. It stares at me dispassionately. Oh, that was actually the that was actually the thing to save it too. Okay. Well, what well, you know what? Whatever. <laughs> I'm just gonna assume that the game just stops and I can't even play it anymore or something. I don't know. I don't even know how long the game goes on for beyond this point before I get to like the game stops. Then I'd have to come back here and do it again. I don't know. If there's something significant that happens, you guys can just let me know. And be fair, I guess. Wait, I, I don't even again. How do I? How would I kill it then? How? How would be the the murder thing? I guess just one of the other ones, maybe between the eyes. Finally, smiles and disappears. Or maybe it had to do even with the battle? I don't know. I'd probably have to check a guide then, honestly. 
The statue stops moving, collapses. It stopped, right? <coughs> Do you believe in spirits now, hero? <coughs> it looks like it. My marks vanished, so it must be over. Fortunately, I'm still gonna die. And ah, look at me, I still got my bullshit. What else is new? Once again, I'm the only one still cursed. Hmm. So the chisel. How do you figure out the chisel was the, the chisel? So this is the one that was seemingly also used to make Mary, huh? And there's a pillow in there from the manor. Uh-oh. I'm grateful that I made it in time. That was a close call. Thanks for saving us, but you know that was pretty reckless. I thought I said it's dangerous for a group of mark bears to go somewhere haunted. Yes, but this seemed important. And it saved our lives in the end. Yeah, I can't complain, man. Tell us, Dr. Diamond. What hap happened at the mansion? To be honest, it's hard for me to logically explain it. But I'll tell you what happened. After you left, I chose to do my own investigation of the mansion. When I passed a certain room, my mark started hurting suddenly. I went inside to look around and found a desk with chisels on it. He must mean the room that I found. My head was in a haze because of the mark at the time. But it seems to me that one chisel was engulfed in a black light. I realize now that I must have had a spiritual encounter. Was Mary trying to help us? Well, made you decide you had to bring the chisel here. You seem sure it would be effective against the cannon soldier. I'm not sure myself. I picked it up and heard a voice. The rest was, well, instinct. It was what Banshee mentioned earlier. The heart of the curse that created the spirit. So I knew I had to give it to you. When I looked through that room before, Yasuoka said that the Kujo family used to create Buddha statues a long time ago. It's possible that Chisel was used to create the statue that became the Ken Soldier. I don't know what that voice was that we heard. Probably something like the mysterious voice that this guy just got at me before. You know, I haven't heard it in a while. That's all I can tell you. Now then, Yushiki, should we go back to the mansion? We need to update Banshee and all that's happened. I didn't bother telling him anything. Yeah. Searching for documents in the mark, carting all the statues. Take more than a day to do all that. We should go back to the mansion and figure out what to do next. What? We're leaving already. I wanted to examine this place. I glanced at the statue falling to the floor. Sorry, but you'll have to do that another time. Fine. In exchange, not one word about this shelter to anyone else. I'm going to study every inch of it. Yeah, yeah, okay. Oh, I'm guessing then that was probably the moment where she would she would be like, No, I'm gonna stay here forever! And then she fucking dies or something, or explodes. Damn, you almost died here. I know the danger is past, but you've gotten over this way too quickly. I'm impressed with your nerves of steel. Or is it more willpower? No, nah, more like routine at this point. You say that again. Return to the concrete passageway. I might be imagining it, but... Feels like the air in here is a little less stagnant than it was before. We climb up out of the manhole in M. New South Alley. Banshee runs up to us, waving. His ever-present smell wafts off him. Figured I'd find you here. You gave me a shot. Dashed down to the mansion like that, damn it. And the next thing I knew, my mark was gone. What happened? I just needed to deliver something. So he kept his wits about him. I mean, usually you lose your memories and stuff too, right? I guess we kind of skipped that this time, right? Because they just were on us so fast. You really saved us. I'd rather not think about the consequence if you hadn't made it in time. I don't get it, but sounds like you did good work, Diamond. Well then, if I must do my investigation another day, I'll be splitting ways here. Our marks are gone now. Yashiki still has his, though. Yeah, you know. This is this just never gonna go away. I've just I've accepted that. This always happens. I'm used to it. But now I might be able to change that. 
I finally discover where the statue sold from a shrine are. I'm lost, but I'm glad for you. It's thanks to all of you. I'll figure the rest out by myself. You should all return to your regular lives. You're saying we should split up then? Uh, you sure you'll be okay? Something will work out eventually. Besides, I say, a, say a Cujo's dying wish. I want to respect it. Unless she's a fucking psycho, in which case, fuck that bitch. Huh. Well, thanks. I'll head back then. I've been missing all those chemical smells from the lab. Why? <laughs> Good to hear your research is exciting. But don't forsake your humanity over it and end up like Miss Zoo. Like I do that. It's not even funny, by the way. Oh, yeah, Mr. Yoshiki. Whenever you want to get those statues, I'll help out. Until then, see you. I'll be off as well. Honestly, all this has put a strain on me. <coughs> I'm barely staying upright. <coughs> Whatever you do, don't collapse on your way home, please. Hey, Yoshiki. One day, I'm hoping to let the public know about the underground shelter. For the sake of the wandering souls, without a proper burial. I'd like it if you helped with it. See you around. Assuming I'm, al I'm alive long enough, sir. Guess I'll go too. I guess I'll go back to being a dirty homeless man. You're not returning to the shelter, are you? I'm not that brave, you crazy psycho bitch. The soldier's gone, but there's plenty of things down there. I'll get a few days set up. So you're still planning on going back? I'm sure I'd call that a smart move. Comes with living this kind of life. I bucket down to park under a bridge till things calm down. See you, Shiki. Bring more food next time, yeah? See you, bitch. Thanks, old man. The former mark bearers have all left. Should probably head to the mansion myself. Gotta decide what to do next. Okay. What the fuck was that? Right in my ear. Your voice calling from behind me. Jersey Banshee in the middle of the road, staring intently at me. What's wrong? Ah, I remember now. His eyes are as wide as saucers. I forgot because the mark, but... Ah, I met you before. Oh! What? What do you mean? Oh, well, uh, let me think. He scratches his chin. Nose members are probably all a mess if I've just gotten them back. But I don't have time to wait for him. Come on, old man! Ah, yes. We met f first met five years ago. And then again, ten days ago. I feel like I've been struck by lightning. I first arrived at Kujo Mansion ten days ago. It means I met him before I lost my memories. I need to know. Who in the world am I? I, I couldn't say. I wasn't interested in asking your name. And you can give it. And tell me what you do know. Tell me about myself, please. Mm, okay, I owe you for the food, so ask. Yeah, also saving you from, you know, imminent death, but sure, the food. What should I ask about five years ago? You showed up at the shelter. Wanted to know about the Heavenly Buddha Project. Give me food. Huh, actually, you were more focused on the Cujo family than the cannon soldier. Why did we talk about that? The head at the time was majorly involved in the project. He was famous for his spiritual power, so the army asked him to help. He loaned them a number of his family's prized sacred treasures. He really zeroed in on that bit. Do you know what exactly the army got? Yeah, the shelter had a list. A mirror, a chisel, Buddha statues, cursed objects, and holy talismans. They were all returned to the family. Hmm. Okay, so maybe this person wasn't the one to make the cannon soldier then? That actually seems like that might be the case then. If the, if the... You know, if it was brought to the mansion after that. Which means they're all in the mansion now. You kept popping by a few times till one day you just didn't. I only saw you next ten days ago. Next is... Ten days ago. I just see the cannon soldier and you can bet I booked it out of the manhole. Ran to you on the street. Had you treat me to food to celebrate? Thanks for that, by the way. Banshee's talking about the person I was before I lost my memories. It's weird to hear about myself this way. You mentioned you've been overseas. You'd only come back recently, about a month ago. 
Oh, and uh, that's when I learned of the mock. He told me about it. It slipped my mind till just now. By that time, was my right arm. Yeah, it had the mock. Really? You acted all out, though. You go to remember something and then stumble over the words. The curse was probably in the late, late stages. In fact, I completely forgotten my name and past a few hours after that. By the by, I got something to tell you. This here Banshee Edo you know, is a much nobler character than regular folk. That's why I led a tech detached life away from the world's vulgarities. What are you trying to say? I could be crazy desperate, but I'd never shame my dear departed mom or divine providence. You understand? No, you lost me. I'm saying that I'd never resort to stealing, even dying of hunger. Here, these are yours. He pulls out a wristwatch and a wallet. Oh, shit. He looks like an antique. They're inlaid with subtle designs. You forgot them at the restaurant. Let me see them. I grab them both and rush to open the wallet. There's no ID inside. Fuck! There's no driver's license or company car with an ID in it when you got it. Don't ask me! You said you forgot your wallet somewhere and, I lo and lost it. It was probably in there. Oh. I look at what else is in the wallet. Bills, coins, and a number of familiar business cards. Zaya Kujo Spirit Healer. Ah, those things. You tried to give me one. Told me to go there if I remembered anything. But I gave it back. I don't make a habit of carrying useless stuff. Sai Kujo's car was in my pocket when I first arrived at Kujo Mansion. It must have been the one Banshee returned. There's no doubt about it. And I'll stole my memories after I met Banshee. I've asked everything I want to know. But something's still bugging me. Did I say anything about the mark when you saw me ten days ago? Mm, well, I was so focused on eating that I wasn't paying full attention. Are you kidding? Oh, yeah, you said the same thing as Hiro about the cannon soldier. There's no way a human head on a statue will make it move. But it did actually move. That's what I thought, too. And then he said something strange. He said what happened 50 years ago wasn't because of the project. It was all because of her. What? Her. That's not all. You said she gave you the mark. That she loved watching you lose your memories and fear death. You made her kick the bucket once. But she came back to life. You said you needed to do the same thing. Done 50 years ago to get rid of her. What? My heart wants to beat on my chest. I feel sweat run down my face. There's no way I can keep calm. Before I lost my memories, I'd known who had cursed me with the mark. Hey, old man. Who's she? Did I tell you? I wanted to know too, so I asked. You couldn't answer me. I don't think you were trying to hide it. It is nice I didn't remember. Is that because of the mark? Eh, that's about all I can tell you. Yashiki, we should get going soon. Go? Where? I'll tell you in your car. I'm real tired of standing. I'd like to sit for a bit. There's no point in arguing here. I'll just get out, get out of it once we're in the car. My past self. What the f What the fuck is going on, dude? If we defeat the soldier, Banshee's mark disappears and he remembers meeting me several times before I lost my memory. I've been investigating the signatures of the Kujo family donated to the Heavenly Buddha Project. When I met him 10 days ago, the mark was already on my arm. I told him she gave it to me, but I'd already forgotten her name by then. Is it gonna be Saya Kujo herself or some shit? Hmm. I'm kind of thinking it might be. I mean, she's not really dead or some shit. I, I don't know. Um, but all right, guys, I think this seems like a good spot to end things here for now. The fucking plot thickens. I think we're potentially heading into the uh, the end game here. Ooh. I, I'm very curious how this is uh, going to potentially end. But it's interesting. Why is there a, why is there a pillow cushion for Mary's Mary's chair there, right? From the Kuja Mansion chair. That is, hmm. 
What's going on with that? I don't know. I don't understand. Fucking weird shit, man. But uh, anyway, guys, I hope you all enjoyed this episode. If you did, please leave a like and a favorite. And subscribe if you're not ready to become a picky penguin aboard the SLP. Where the days are always sunny and the vids are always funny. And as always, guys, till next time, stay classy.